What's up, everybody? This is Jimmy with Trading and Code. It is April 13th, 2023. It's 4.11 in the afternoon. Uh, today was a decently trending day once we got past the sideways chop. Um, I personally only took two trades today, one of which was a break-even trade, uh, and the other one was a $500 winner. Uh, with that being said, we were able to point out uh, some, some good quality trades for, for our members. We have a lot of new faces in there, and when we start to get more and more new people, I spend more time trying to help them understand certain trades, trying to uh, point out potential entries and exits, things like that, uh, that I would trade myself. So I missed out on a lot of these moves, but that's okay. That's part of the trade-off. It's a symbiotic uh, relationship here. You guys are supporting me through Patreon, and in turn, I can afford to miss some decent trades. So that is the way this works. That's the way it's always worked. With that, let's go ahead and get into the chart so I can explain to you guys some things because there is something that we had an issue with today that I needed to uh, remind folks uh, not to do, okay? So in pre-market, um, we had a kind of a sloppy pre-market. I picked these lines because they seem to hold a little bit more value than being all the way up here. Plus, it was very close to our futures lines. Um, and as you can see, the futures lines held uh, pretty good as well. But uh, we had a pretty tight range in the pre-market, 408.30 to 409.19, so less than a dollar move. 8.30, we got producer price index numbers and, um, and jobless claims and all that fun stuff. Market was pretty happy about it, came down, and kind of just failed to move higher in the pre-market. And then at open, we were basically rejecting a futures line. We come down to support. Futures, support, futures, support, futures, support. At what point do you say, hey, we're having a much harder time moving lower. We came from being lower. Uh, you could have bought puts up here, calls down here. Now, with the way ADD was behaving near this time, um, I didn't like puts. So I was telling people I would... If I was playing this channel, I would be a buyer of calls at the bottom, not a buyer of puts at the top. At the, at the moment, we were wedging up, and I was explaining to people that on wedges, if you're, if you're putting in higher lows and, and putting all the pressure on the lid, usually the lid pops off. Okay, well, lo and behold, here we are, higher lows, moving up to resistance, and ultimately the lid pops off. So, buying calls off support, selling them at resistance. Up until this point, resistance would have been this line here. However, we put in a lower high here, and therefore, you wanna take your profits there, okay? You don't ignore this resistance. You don't jump into this and say, man, I hope it continues to go through and ignores this resistance. You get in here, you get out here. That was actually a really good trade, good for about 40 to 50% on your money. We put in a higher low. We talk about that being the case that we're wedging up and we're just waiting for the break up or the break down. Either way, you gotta wait. So we have basically a break and retest here, entry candle all the way up to the next line of resistance. But Jimmy, you could have just held it. Yes, and what I'm trying to do now is help people stay in these trades longer by saying, hey, if we get up to a line of resistance, which would normally be our target, Move your stop up so that if it just acts very tough as a resistance and shoots back down, you could stop out in profit. Or if we could close above that line, put your stop loss at the target. Stay in the trade, see if we can trail this to the side, to the, to the way up. And what we do, because I was asked about this in a comment yesterday, explain a trailing stop loss. If we close above this level of resistance, Immediately, I would recommend people put their stop loss at your original take profit place. So in this case, it would be 410.01. This is our first target high. We hit it. Once this candle closes, I would move my stop up halfway up this candle. Okay, 410.19, 410.18. Once it closes and this candle starts to print, move it up to the closing price of the previous candle. 410.26. As that moves up, move it halfway up this green candle. 
Okay, now in this case, we got close enough to our next target that I would have taken profits there anyway. But even if I didn't, my stop loss would be halfway up this candle anyhow, and this wick would have taken me out. Okay, you don't want to make it too tight because then a little tiny pullback in a move that might continue up might take you out. But don't forget and don't discount the idea that you already made it way past your original profit target. You were happy with this at this point. This was all cream on the top. Okay, don't let the emotional side of this break you. Okay, be happy that you got more than you originally planned to get out of the trade. It's that simple. So here I am watching all these things take place, watching it happen exactly how I thought it would. We break, retest red, retest green. Now I missed this entry and I was contemplating it here and I said, you know what, we're in an uptrend. ADD was printing green candles pretty significantly at this point. I think we had just put in a new high a day on ADD. I said, I'm gonna buy a pullback here. I did exactly that. I told everybody a candle close below 401.47 would be my stop loss. So I got in here, we got real close to stopping me out. We started to move up and I was back to even on the trade. And I asked our community, guys, what do you guys think? I'm asking for a little feedback. I'm sorry if you guys hear thunder. I live in South Florida and the storms down here have been absolutely insane for the last few days. So if this video cuts out randomly, that's why. Um, and I hope that doesn't happen. So we're going to try to speed this up a little bit. Ultimately, I took myself out of this trade at even. Um, and it did end up making it up to, on this candle, my $100 per target, uh, per contract target. Not mad. I was in this trade longer than I like to stay in my trades. It was having a hard time moving higher. So consensus was just get out even, reset, find another trade to take. So I did exactly that. So this was my first trade. It was a break even trade. We move up, we pull down, okay, we get back up. Now, at this point, we've developed a pretty good resistance here. And I said, you know what? I'm going to play this as a channel, basically looking to get back down to at least this level here. Okay, or if I was lucky enough to get down to here. However, I got my $100 per, per contract in this candle and I just took myself out. Again, I was looking at this as a counter trend trade. Okay, I still felt better about buying calls down here than puts up here. But since this channel was proving to hold, I went ahead, I took the opportunity, I took my predictable slice of the pie, made $100 per contract there. That was a $500 trade. That was the last trade I took. Um, and again, I was trying to focus on talking about the emotional side of trading today as well as trying to help people make good trading decisions by pointing out things that we were seeing, okay? So all these white arrows here are trades that I would have taken, but I did not. And then the circles are the same thing. If I ever do a yellow circle, by the way, that is because that was a break-even trade, which is exactly what happened there. So as we continue to bounce in this channel, we said, hey, some people were like, oh, should I buy puts right here? Should I buy puts at the yellow line? I said, if you're going to buy puts, understand it's a counter trend trade on the day. Still trade, trending up. Do so up here at this level, right? 410.80 was the number we picked. And the reason you want to pick a good entry for something like this is because your stop would be right here, 410.89. You could have had a 9 or 10 cent stop on this trade because once we break that level of resistance, I believed we were going to move up towards this teal line up here. Just with the pressure of the buyers. That's just how I felt. So recommended a, a not recommended. We talked about the potential entry of a put here. And where are we looking to take it? Well, right down here, basically the same place as these. Okay. And we did find that level exactly to the penny. Now, I like to give myself a five cent, a five cent buffer. So if your target is 410.30, okay? If you get to 410.35, take your profits. Sometimes you'll get to your mark. Sometimes you'll get in between your, your actual 30 cent line and between your 35 and 30 cent line. Sometimes you'll make it right through both. 
But in an uptrend, puts, short-term trades, treat them like scalps. We start putting in higher lows, higher highs. We finally break through that uh, 410.80, ultimately making a new high of day. We have a trend line here. Now, what's good, the reason this trend line is here is so that we can know if the trend is going to continue to the upside, right? If it breaks, which we talked about, you would expect the move to come down to at least this yellow line. And if this yellow line fails, well, we'd be looking for support down here where these ones found support as well, or even this for that matter. Okay, so right down near that 30 cent line again, again, within five cents, if you took a trend line break and you happen to hold through this support line, congratulations, that's still close to a 30% move. We find support there, we come back up, double bottom, we shoot back up, make it through now this resistance, okay? I'm holding my, my mouse here so you can see it. See all these dotted line right here where we have a double top? Look at where we found support. Old resistance becomes new support. Ultimately, once we were able to clear and stay above that, we end up making it all the way up to our teal line. Okay, now during this section here, in fact, during a good portion of this day, we had quite a few members constantly asking questions about puts. And this is the part of this video where I'm going to hammer something home for you. It is always better, safer, you'll feel better about buying calls in an uptrending day on your pullbacks, okay? If you are feeling that puts are the only thing you can play, you will convince yourself that every time we make a new high, that that means you should buy a put. And on a day like this, for most intents and purposes, if you misplayed a counter trend trade, you lost money. You would have been much more comfortable and much more profitable buying calls on every pullback than you would have if you took counter trend trades the whole day. Okay. My thought process was very simple today. Your top 10 was bright green. The queues were moving up significantly. SPY struggled, but overall was moving up, and ADD was trending up almost the entire day. Everything was telling you, stay away from puts. Everything, literally everything. Yet we still had people wanting to play puts. Yes, you can make money in counter trend trades. I understand that. But when you're sitting up here looking at resistance, saying, oh, you know, this is a pretty good... Um, rejection area. I'm going to buy puts. That's fine. But you better be aware of where your support lines are because they're most likely going to hold during an uptrend. Okay. Now here, I know I took a put here. I know I suggested a put here. I even bought calls here. It was very clear that we were struggling to move higher. And like I said earlier, at this time during the day, here, I'll show you. At this time during the day, which is right here, what's ADD doing? It's pulling back, okay? During this time of the market, ADD was pulling down, okay? So that meant more stocks were starting to roll over to the red side than that of the green side. So more stocks were starting to decline at that time than those that were moving up. Use ADD as a tool, as confirmation for the overall market, okay? As you could see, these puts would have worked. They came down, they were short-term trades, and they would find support where you would expect to find support. I'm sorry in advance if you hear my dogs whining in the background or barking, it's because of the thunder, they're afraid and they're locked in their crates. So this is a shit show, sorry in advance. Uh, with that, I just wanna point out that we hit all of our targets to the upside. Um, we were trending up all day. We made it through uh, the next futures line. We found support on our, on our what was that, our third target high. Ended up making it through yesterday's high of day. Uh, then we get up here and we have a break and retest. We call this trade very clear. We had some people in this trade and I walked them literally all the way through the whole thing. Just going through things, telling them where to put their stops along the way so that they could feel comfortable in this trade. This gentleman made 20%. Now he's playing a pretty far out of the money strikes. 
And at the end of the day, which is ruthless when it comes to Theta, um, but nonetheless, it worked out perfectly, perfectly. Line to line, break, retest, in an uptrend, there's no fear. And if there is, just move your stop up to stop yourself out. That's it. We get up to our next futures line, pull back a little bit. Again, I'm still not recommending call or puts, wouldn't do it. Um, right back up, um, oh, I'm sorry, that wasn't a futures line. Right back up to resistance, support, resistance, support. We're talking about it again. Guys, how many times are you going to let this opportunity potentially pass you by? If I was, I said, very clear, if I was going to trade this late in the day, I would buy calls off 413.22 and I would sell them at 413.73. That's a 50 cent move, a nice play right there. You had it once, you could have played puts up there, which I wouldn't have done. Back down to support, right back up to resistance. And then we close the day out on that support. And here we are. So with that being said, we're gonna wrap it up. I took two trades, one was break even, one was a $500 win. I'm okay with that, uh, but more importantly, today we spent a lot of time having conversations about the mental side of trading, the mindset you need to have in order to succeed in this business, as well as finding trades that were worth taking, safe, conservative trades, trades that you should feel good about taking, okay? Uh, with that, we're gonna wrap it up. I hope you all had a fantastic day. If you got anything out of this video, please like, share, and subscribe, I'd appreciate it. Also, if you'd like to join our Discord community, there's a link down below, we'd love to have you. Lastly, if you like the perks that came with that free week trial that you got the day you signed up in our Discord, please consider becoming a patron. We'd love to have you, and you can unlock all the benefits of our community, one of which is trading with me live during the day. I'm in your ear all day long. Uh, you have access to my live chart, and you have access to our audiobook library, which is pretty extensive. Okay, with that, hope you all uh, did well today. I love you. Until the next one. See you.